सर्फेस टेंशन इज कंसिडर टू बी अ टफ टॉपिक फॉर आई टी जे एडवांस एंड ऑफ लेट आई टी हैज बीन आस्किंग सम रियली वेरी ट्रिकी क्वेश्चन दे कैन बी टू अप्रोचेस टू सॉल्व अ सर्फेस टेंशन प्रॉब्लम वन इज द फोर्स अप्रोच द एफ बी डी अप्रोच दर इज द प्रेशर डिफरेंस अप्रोच सो हाई माई नेम इज ब्रजेश चौधरी एंड दिस वीडियो आई एल बी टीचिंग यू फाइंडिंग एक्सेस प्रेशर इन साइड अ कर्व लिक्विड सर्फेस so uh, for that thing i'll be taking a surface which are having more than one radius of curvature and will derive a general expression for the axis pressure uh, and then use that expression to uh, various applications so let's go ahead so suppose this is a you can see uh, the main surface is abcd abcd is a small part of a, a curvilinear rectangular part of the curvilinear surface so whenever we are going to take any small element that has to be a rectangular element so abcd is a rectangular curvilinear element of a liquid surface you can see uh, there are two uh, uh, abcd mean abc bc cd and da the parts so ab and bc parts are having uh, radius of curvatures uh, r1 and r2 respectively the center of curvature of the part ab is at o1 and the center of curvature of part bc is at uh, o2 now what we want to do uh, suppose uh, some external agent slowly slowly pulls it up and the surface reaches to a new position uh, that is shown in the diagram by is a dash b dash uh, c dash t dash so and t is the surface tension so uh, using the work energy method approach we want to find the pressure inside and outside the pressure difference the axis pressure uh, between the two sides of the surface abcd so let's go to the next slide p is the p i am saying is this axis pressure so uh, this is the expand expanded diagram uh, now uh, as the surface abcd initial position was abcd some external uh, agent takes it to a new position a dash b dash c dash d dash the surface remaining a very small rectangular so uh, we want to find the change in area uh, uh, let's assume that the uh, length ab is x length uh, bc is y and now when it goes a little above the length a dash b dash has become x plus del x and length b dash c dash has become a y plus del y so change in area is the area uh, a dash b dash c dash minus area a b c d a dash b dash c dash is uh, x plus del x into y plus del y that area and uh, area b c d is obviously x y so these del x and del y are very small so if we simplify we are going to get delta is equal to x del y plus y del x that is a change in area now we know that uh, surface energy uh, is equal to surface tension into surface area so as area changes the surface energy of the liquid surface changes so change in uh, surface energy of the surface will become uh, surface tension t into change in area so t delta a and putting the value of delta a will get surface change in uh, surface energy t x del y plus y del x and we assume that the axis pressure is p so axis pressure mean the pressure uh, below abcd minus pressure above abcd so because of the axis pressure we want to find the thrust force acting on the uh, surface abcd so the pressure is p axis pressure is p p inside minus p outside is p and the area abcd is xy so thrust on that surface abcd because of the above pressure and below pressure below pressure is more so that is p into that surface area so axis pressure uh, will make a and outward thrust and that that net outward thrust will be uh, p into xy so because uh, because of that extra extra pressure extra force and the whole uh, liquid surface goes by a little distance above that distance uh, we have chosen to be del z so uh, work done by work done by uh, thrust force on the liquid surface will be uh, f into del z f into del z mean p x y uh, del z 
now use the energy consideration so uh, we know that uh, sub and obviously we are assuming that all this thing has been done very slowly slowly so change in potential energy is equal to the work done by external agent so external agent has done work w and the surface energy has been changed by delta u so our relationship would be w is equal to delta u so we had written w is equal to how much uh, p uh, x y into del z and delta u t x del y plus y del x so uh, divide the right hand whole, both equation by uh, x y del z so that will become this and for the simplification will give me uh, p is equal to 1 by y del y by del z plus 1 by x uh, del x by del z now use some geometry considerations so suppose according to geometry c uh, see uh, triangle ABO1 and triangle A dash B dash O1. Why I am saying triangle? Because uh, these are very infinitesimal part of the curvilinear surface. It is an expanded diagram. So that is actually a, a B is the curve, but that can be regarded as a straight line. So these two triangle A dash B dash O1 and AB O1 are similar triangle. So it means A dash B dash by uh, b dash o1 is equal to a b by b o1 and a dash b dash is x plus del x and uh, a b is equal to x and um, b dash o1 is equal to uh, r1 r1 plus del z and b dash o1 is equal to r1 so on putting this thing uh, that will be x plus del x divided by r1 plus del x is equal to x is e x by r1 and uh, use uh, component and dividend and arrange this thing so we will get uh, del x by del z is equal to x upon r1 or we can write uh, del x 1 by x del x by del z 1 by x del x by del z is equal to 1 by r1 uh, similarly we can do for the other surface like uh, b dash c dash o2 and uh, b c o2 same similar triangle consideration will give me 1 by y del y by del z is equal to 1 by r2 so this we will get and now club all these things three things together so what we had written we had got uh, pressure axis pressure p is equal to t 1 over y del y by del z plus 1 over x del x by del z and this thing we just obtained 1 by y del by del z is equal to 1 by r2 and uh, 1 by x del x by del z is equal to 1 by r1 putting all this thing in the above equation we will get uh, p is equal to t1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 so now uh, here i want to add one thing the surface was such that the roc of the both parts I mean we have taken a rectangular element and the rectangular element has a two perpendicular edges the both edges have center of curvature on the same side so then we have got axis pressure t is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 and we'll see uh, some cases just after a few slides that the two edges of a rectangular segment of a surface have center of curvature on the opposite side and in that case in that case uh, in between the 1 by r1 and 1 by r2 there will be minus sign and uh, this means that the concave side the below side is a concave side and the above side is a con uh, convex side so convex side concave side there will always be greater pressure than the convex side so let's go ahead for some simple uh, application then we will have uh, uh, but unusual applications also so first thing is a very uh, simple thing that the spherical drop and for this we do the normal derivation also by the force method so here we'll do using this method so this is a spherical drop it has a radius r so at the surface take a little rectangular uh, uh, element and this rectangular element is say a b c d and uh, there are a b and b c c d four sides so suppose the roc of these parts are i mean for, for the part uh, 
AD is R1 and for the part BC is R2 and because it is a sphere so both R1 and R2 is equal to the radius of the sphere and again the center of curvature for any part is same and both are on the same side. So uh, now using that formula P is equal to T1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 put R1 R2 is equal to R we will get the usual result P is equal to 2T by R. And if uh, we are having a spherical uh, bubble soap, so uh, it has a two surfaces, so the same formula that we have obtained will become twice, so that will be uh, P is equal to 40 by R. Now let's take a case of a cylindrical drop. Oh, this is a cylindrical drop, I have a magnified, now see here. I have taken at the surface a rectangular uh, element ABCD, you can see it clearly. The uh, AB has a center of curvature you can see there and the part AB has a radius of curvature equal to the radius of the cylindrical bubble that is R. And the part uh, BC or DA has radius of curvature infinite because that is a straight part. So putting the formula again T is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 will give me T is equal to uh, P is equal to T by R. So this is the expression for the axis pressure inside a cylindrical drop. And the same way if we are having a cylindrical bubble. So bubble has a two uh, surfaces. So the same expression that we got just before will become double. So we'll have expression P is equal to 2T by R. Now uh, there are some drops which are called synclastic surface drops. What are they? Uh, they are something like this. You can see that they have two surfaces and uh, both radius of curvature, center of curvature on the same side. Uh, you will be uh, you will be able to visualize if I take a small element. So I have taken a small rectangular element ABCD you can see. So see the part AB, AB that the curved part, the upper part. The center of curvature of the part AB is at O1 and its radius of curvature is R1 and the center of curvature of part BC is on the axis of this kind of uh, ellipsoidal drop and its center of curvature is O2 and radius of curvature is uh, R2. So you can see that the both center of curvature are within the liquid drop or on the same side. Such type of drops are called synclastic surface drop. So here uh, we have R1 and R2 given and both are on the same side. So we will put just P is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 that is the axis pressure inside and outside. Here the inside pressure is more. And then there are uh, some drops which are called anti-clastic surface drop. So what are they? They are like this. So again let's take a small rectangular element of this surface like this. So here you can see that the uh, edge AB and edge uh, BC are perpendicular. The center of curvature of edge AB is outside. That is O2 and its radius of curvature is R2. The center of curvature of uh, uh, edge uh, AD or BC is uh, uh, O1 and its radius of curvature is inside the drop. So you can see that the two centers of curvature are on the different sides. So such drops are called anti-clastic surface drops. So we know that the on the concave side, on concave side the pressure is more. So if we look the edge AB, for edge not uh, for the edge AB, yes, for the edge AB, uh, the according to edge AB the outside pressure is more. Because for AB the outside surface is the concave side. For the edge a, AD or BC the inside side is the concave side for that thing inside side pressure is more. So we want to write expression for the pressure inside minus pressure outside. So that will be uh, now the two ROCs have a different sign. So here I will write in terms of the magnitude. So that will be P1 by R1 minus 1 by R2 and now this uh, pressure can be negative also, this pressure can be zero also, this pressure can be positive also. Uh, 
if r1 and r2 are zero so there will be no excess pressure if uh, r1 is more than r2 so that will be a negative excess pressure and so on and the application of the anti-clastic liquid drop is this force between two uh, plates separated by thin layer of liquid so i have uh, this uh, plate on this plate i have dropped some liquid so it will spread out in a uh, disc type of area like this so that drop is spread out in a circular uh, area pi r square the radius is r so i want to put another plate above this like this and bring them the two plates together so now the liquid will be you know uh, compressed and the final shape of the liquid between the two plates would be something like this now see here in the second diagram uh, i have taken a rectangular element abcd you can see abcd so for the segment uh, ab or dc the center of curvature is over the center of curvature is the center of the circular region at which that drop is there and its radius is r and uh, for the part bc or da the center of curvature is outside o2 and its radius of curvature is say rc so that is kind of an anti-clastic liquid drop and its 2d diagram is this and uh, we can suppose that two plates are separated by distance d so the the surface bc and uh, da i'm assuming that uh, it's at the angle of contact at that surface with the plate is degree the radius of which of uh, bc can assume to be by 2 d is the uh, thickness between the thickness distance between the two plates so here so r1 is r r1 is r r1 means the r is the the radius in which that drop is spread and r2 is the d by 2 r2 is rc that is d by 2 so that is d by 2 and d is the distance between the two plates obviously d is very very small compared to the r so this and then uh, the formula for the access pressure is a uh, uh, now in this case that will be because the two center of curvature are on Side, so that will be p1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 putting the value of r1 and r2 uh, we'll get the t is equal to p1 by r minus 2 by d so uh, normally the thickness of the plate would be very very small so d is very very small compared to uh, r so r is very very large so 1 by r we can neglect so our expression will become minus 2t by d here the minus sign tells that the inside pressure is more than the outside pressure so the liquid that is inside there is pressure is less than the outside outside pressure is obviously uh, atmospheric pressure so atmospheric as atmosphere is the pressing the plates together so to pull them apart we will have to apply some outward direction force and to just pull them apart the force that we will have to apply will be uh, access pressure into the area of the plate and that is this thing a into 2t by d that is a 280 by d so uh, that's all for this access pressure inside uh, liquid uh, curved liquid surface having more than two radius of curvature and based on this we can do any type of problem uh, without doing the force method uh, directly using the pressure difference method we can get the answer thank you